Hello, hello. You guys, I was trying to think, when was the last time I was live? It was with my mom and we were doing the Christmas pudding. I think that was like almost a month ago. Hi, Julie. Welcome. I'm trying to, I'm in a new area of my, uh... hi guys. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Angie. I'm in a, in a new spot right now. Well, not too new, but newish. Hey, Suzanne. How are you guys? I am so good. I think when you, hi, Anne. Oh, I'm so excited. Anne's on. Anne and my mom are cousins, you guys, and Anne is in England, and I love Anne to pieces, and I just saw your daughter, saw the Northern Lights. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. My mom should be on, too, hopefully. Um, but I have to say, like, when you guys, if anybody ever gets you know when you get a migraine or you get sick and then you, you get over it and you're like, oh my God, I feel like a million bucks. That's how I feel. And my mom never got COVID. And for those of you who guys have been following me, you know, like I was down and out for about 10 days. And now I feel great. I've been creating all week. I'm super excited to show you guys some stuff. Hi, Beth and Sandy. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. I was so excited. I have so much to chat with you about today. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> It's crazy <laughs> and Molly oh it's so good and to all my new friends out there thank you for joining um, I have a new abstract class it's not actually new it's a free abstract class on my site and I link to this group so I'm so happy that you guys have hopped on here so every Saturday I try to do a live around 10 o'clock uh, Pacific time and in the fall, it was a little bit crazy because my kids are both on basketball teams and they had all these tournaments. But now that the season is just a regular school season, um, the games are not on Saturday. So I'll be here on Saturdays. Hello, Christina. Oh, gosh. So good to see you guys. And I know I'm like, I'm, uh, like 30 seconds behind the comments that are coming in. So good to see everybody. Happy Saturday. We've got a lot going on. There's a lot of football going on in my house. I don't know about you guys, but it is football season. So I'm out here in the studio being creative and enjoying it. And um, I have so much to share. So I thought I'll just wait a second, make sure everybody's on. And I don't have a flower today, but I have a tree today. I don't have the coolest story, so I can't wait for that. And speaking of flower trees, Somebody, I think it was Bonnie, I can't, I think it was Bonnie, had asked where to find the tutorial that we did in our live for the little pots. Well, first of all, look at this. Okay, I've never even put a bottom on here. I just spritz it with water. So this is, these are succulents and succulents try to find light and they grow really tall and up. Can you see this one? This little guy right here. And when they get like that, you just have to kind of clip a little bit off and oh, let me just turn the sound off on there. Um, you just have to clip a little bit off and they'll just continuing, they'll just continue to grow. But I found where this is. All right, so my lives are always saved. And if you're on a desktop in our group, there is a drop down menu at the very top and all the videos and all the photos, the stills, are in a folder called media. And when you click on media, you get two groups, photos and videos. So you wanna click on the video folder and in the video folder, you'll see anybody who's posted a video, it will be there. Most of them are mine because they're the lives. The, the, this one, I'm gonna try and hopefully name it, is like the fifth one, okay? It's, it's not the Christmas pudding one with my mom, it's the live before the Christmas pudding. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> That's in there. I just wanted to tell Bunny that because I was going to look for you and I did that this morning. Okay, so um, when I saw so I'm from Buffalo, for those who don't know, I'm from Buffalo, New York. And when I was back in October, a dear friend of mine, Terry Kasimov, gave me this gift. Okay, so she gave me this gift and it is called an acorn vase. Okay, so the acorn vase is. Um, kind of like when you have the avocados and you put the, the avocado pit in a vase, you do this with an acorn. And so she gave it to me and it's so beautiful. 
And um, so I was so excited. I'm like, okay, okay, what do I do? And so Donna, who's on in our group, Propus and I, because my mom's foot was broken at the time, her little bone was broken, so she couldn't walk. We went hunting for acorns. And so here's the thing. To do this, to do this, you need to find acorns. And we walked around and found a whole bunch. So I brought a whole bunch of these back from Buffalo, okay? So this little oak tree. And um, what you do is, and there's there's <laughs> directions in here, and I will link to where I got this work because I got another one. So you get your, all you, get, you collect all your acorns. And then when you collect your acorns, you put them in a bowl of water. And whatever ones sink, you don't use those. You take all the ones that don't sink, the ones that are floating on top, and you wrap them in paper towels and you put them in the refrigerator, okay? And so I think I had 12 or so to start, six, well, maybe even more than that. Maybe I had like 20, and I think about eight of them worked. So I put the eight and I wrapped them up in paper towels and you check, you put them in this refrigerator for two weeks and then you check like every few days. So I was all like unrolling them and checking them and nothing was happening. I mean, I was so like, what? Where's my acorn supposed to grow? So I reread the directions and it says that, especially in Northern America, in North America, it can take two to eight weeks in the refrigerator. So I'm like, okay. So I marked my acorns with do not throw out because my husband loves to go in the refrigerator every, like once a month and throw everything out. I don't know why. So I wrote do not throw out. So when my mom was here in October, uh, December, so it was a good two months of them in the refrigerator, making sure that the paper towels were damped, damp, all of a sudden the acorn started to crack and there was a tiny little, little tiny root forming. And then when it's at that stage after eight weeks in, in North America, I don't know what it's like in the other countries, you leave it on your counter at room temperature and then you still have it wrapped up in paper towels. I know this is so long, but wait till you guys see this, okay? Ready? Oh my God. Okay, look how, first of all, look at this face, okay? And there is my new tree. You guys, can you see this? How cool is that? So this little white part was what was growing just a little bit in the refrigerator and then you leave it at room temperature. And then when it's, you know, this acorn vase fits this size of an acorn. And I am just, I have this on my shelf and every morning it's just growing so beautiful. So I have four acorns and I found a couple more vases that I have in my house, just my own, but you can see where it's cracked and it's growing and here's another one and I just found these and I just thought they were so cool and I love like the roots okay so then I or so I ordered a new one of these because I wanted to show you when they're in the refrigerator this is what they would look like when they start growing I'm doing this backwards but I just thought that was so beautiful so there's my gardening story. So now I'm going to have four oak trees. Now my sister in Georgia would have a complete conniper because I'm actually bringing a tree from the east coast to the west coast, but we're not going to tell her because she's not on Facebook. So we're all good. When she sees them, she'll be like, where are those? So anyway, that's my acorn story. So every once in a while, I will show you how my acorns are going. <laughs> okay. Let's see, um, I have a couple class announcements and I wanna show you um, some work I've been doing. I wanna show you some um, vision board stuff, but I also have some questions that I put some questions out on my, I didn't put questions, sorry. I asked if you guys had any questions and I have about four questions I wanna answer. And so thank you for responding. And anytime I do a live, if you guys ever have questions during my live, just send them to me before I go on and I'd be happy to research and get back to you. So um, I have some of those and I wanted to share. And okay, so here are my class announcements and my nose is running, you guys, so sorry. <laughs> um, 
if anybody took Lifebook last year, you know I did a class for Lifebook and that is now on my site. It's called Wings of Love. It's a three hour mini class. It's only $19 and it's a, um, I actually sold the piece so I don't have it to show you but you can see it on my site and I will also link it in this group. It's a mixed media piece and you do it on a wooden panel and it's all about writing a poem and a love letter and then you cut that up into the wings, the feathers and we mount it and it's with paint, collage materials, um, mixed media tools, Neo, super fun. It's about this size and you can either put it on a board or you can just put it on like a hard watercolor paper. You can gift it to somebody for Valentine's. You can make it for your own Valentine's. So that is um, on my site now. And if you go to um, my online courses, on andreagarvey.com, drop down and it's there. So that's fun. The other thing is my vision board class is free and I wanted to do a whole like thing in the beginning of the year. I had my whole book group coming over and then I got sick and I was so bummed, but you know, there's never a wrong time to do a vision board. I think some people like to do it at the beginning of the year like I do, but you can do a vision board anytime you want. So I'm gonna show you a couple boards and that is also on my site and that is free for anybody. It's not super long and I put in tons of resource materials and all good stuff. So that's really fun class. All right, so I'm gonna flip us over. First I wanna show you what a gorgeous day it is. Hold on, I'm gonna flip. Okay, look how beautiful you guys. It has been the most beautiful weather for the last month. Fortunately, I think we need some, um, we need some rain again, but anyway, this is my, hold on. I'm wondering if I'm backwards, let's see. Let's see, oh no, oh yes, darn it, you guys. Er, I hate being backwards, but you'll get the gist. And I don't think I can flip us back around again. That's the only bummer. So we'll just have to go with it. Okay, so when I do my boards, huh, you know what? I'll show you guys my boards when I flip myself back around again. So at least I'll be right reading that way. Okay, so just be, we'll just hang on to the boards for a minute, okay? So I wanted to show you a couple things that I'm working on. And again, it's a little bit backwards, but because it's um, art, it's mostly abstract. It's okay to be any direction, right? So let me just get a set. I'm gonna turn off these lights. Cause they're a little bit. I don't like the way they're warm. Okay. So do do do. Okay, here we go. All right. Is anybody um, on Instagram might be watching some? Hold on one second. I just want to make sure we are. Good over here, and if you have any questions, I can see them. Bear with me one second. I'm trying to find myself on the group. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Do do do. So what I'm doing is, I um have. Just making sure. I have these canvases and they are, you can see, oops. <laughs> you guys, not only not backwards, but then you have to kind of go one direction when you really want to go the other direction. There we go. Okay. Right there. Blah. Okay, good. All right. So these are eight by 10 and I got a pack of eight by 10 on Amazon and they're great. They're, you know, it's really nice. I mean, they're nice quality. They're thick wooden bars. I can't remember um, the brand or anything, but you can find all of this stuff. And I bought a four pack with the intention of creating these lots of layers. And then eventually I will be selling these. So I wanted to do this thing on Instagram where I'm doing one layer a day and posting it. And so this is layer number five and I have to figure out a way if I can 
get these videos over to like YouTube or something, but they're vertical. So it's just all wonky the way I have to do all these videos. But I wanted you to see how when I work, when I work small, I love to work on multiple pieces at once. And this is very similar to my um, abstract class I have on my site that's also free and it's a mini class. But it's just that you can do this type of art when you're on paper. Like, and I love to use watercolor paper, 140 pound, because it's thick. But you can do this type of art on watercolor paper and on canvases. And I just wanna show you that right now, I couldn't tell you at all what these are gonna look like, whether they're gonna be this color palette or tomorrow I'm gonna change the color palette up. The reason why I love to play with acrylics is because the paint is dry and then I'll slap something on it tomorrow and maybe tomorrow I'm feeling, oh, I wanna you know, put a hot fluorescent pink on here. Then you can and you're not gonna have to worry about it being muddy because the paint underneath is dry. So each layer that I've done, I, oh, I also have these up on Pinterest. That In case you're not on Instagram, they're on Pinterest. And I'm on Pinterest as Andrea Garvey Art. That might be another place where you can see the each layer separately. And they are time-lapse, so they're a little fast. Sorry about that. But you know what? That's the best I can do with, with a one-man show around, one-woman show around here. So these right now have lots of different colors. And I also added stencils on, I think, layer four. And so you can see the different stencil work here. One of the reasons I also love working with stencils is because I'll put it on thick. And once it's on thick, you can see the texture. Let's see if I can bring this up so you know what I'm talking about. Do you see that texture right there? Isn't that so cool? And um, it's just like another thing that makes, I think, acrylic painting so fun too. Well, I know you can get a lot of texture out of oils as well, but you can't really get a lot of texture out of watercolor. Anyway, I thought those were really pretty. I am so crazy about purple and turquoise right now. Turquoise, purple, and like greens. I love adding the white titanium to colors. So a lot of this is repetitive when I do my videos and you'll see my work, but you know, you never know what you're gonna get, right? Each time you paint like this intuitive way, you really have no idea. And I gotta tell you that every time I paint like this, something new comes up that I wrote that I'm like, oh, I really like how that looks together or I really like this color combination. This one is a little different. It's a little bit lighter and more pastel and I'm really liking that too. I could end up doing three one direction and one another direction, but when I'm painting this small, you know, when you're working with acrylics and you and you put a bunch of acrylics down on your palette paper, it is nice to work on multiples, even if you have three or four journal pages open, because then you could be putting the paint down. And I would say that for these panels, each layer is taking me about um, 45 minutes. Not each panel, but like I'll sit down for 45 minutes to an hour. I really don't like to work longer than that without getting up and walking away. A lot of times if I work past an hour, things will get really muddy fast for me because I'm so impatient and I just wanna go to the next layer. So I encourage you guys to let your acrylics dry Try different things, try different colors, and also walk away, take a break, go get something to eat, um, come back, and then, you know, your layer will be dry, and then you can start again. It's just really good to get up and kind of walk away from, from things. So this, I would say these are like halfway done. So I'm excited to share with you next week. Um, they'll probably be finished next week fingers crossed. Um, but if you are on Instagram, I'm posting reels every day on each one and also Pinterest. And I'll see if I can figure out an easy way to find that. I know not everybody's on Instagram, so I get it. You can't be on all of the places. Um, okay. So let me show you my sketchbook, what I've been doing. And then I also want to talk about all my questions. So this is what's going to bug me. You guys is that we're backwards, <laughs> but it's okay. I hope it's okay. You guys will get it. All right. 
So, um, it was so funny, but you know, it's abstract. <laughs> Wait, can I do this? <laughs> this is backwards and upside down, but it's a little bit more normal for me to look at it that way. But anyway, I can't remember if I showed this before, but this is um, India ink. And I was using India ink because I really wanted to be very loose. And I was using a round brush. Let's see if I can find my my brush, um, I don't have it in front of me, but I was using a round, one brush, and just really having fun and kind of enjoying just the flow and the movement. So that one was fun to work on, and then I guess this can't really be backwards, but um, this is a one that I really liked. I really was enjoying it. I mean, there's some things that, have, that are bugging me a tiny bit of the composition, but what I liked about it was just going in with the black India ink in a bit in big, you know, sections and then going in with um, I think I used a paint pen. I used a Posca black paint pen and that was really fun, too, to just get some different designs. I often look at these types of things that I do in black and white and just like dream of being on fabric. Like, a, can you imagine a beautiful dress? in just the black and white and big beautiful flowers. So that's one of my that's one of my things to do <laughs> one day. All right, what else? Okay, that one I want to show you in a minute. All right, so this one <laughs> I'm going all the way upside down, whatever. You guys bear with me. All right, this one I think I showed you, but for anybody who's new to the group today, um I'm trying to I'm going to find this. This is Hold on, bear with me. I'm gonna, um, where is it? Where, 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 where is it? I'm looking for the tissue paper. Um, oh darn it. Maybe I used it all up, but um, Jeannie in our group bought me a beautiful, she gave me some soaps from her shop and she had them, whoops, wrapped up in this gorgeous tissue paper. And I'm using this tissue paper on the um, little pots, okay? But I also was working on this piece where it was just abstract and it was solid colors and I really didn't like it at all. And so what I encourage you to do is if you're working in your art journal and you don't like what you've done, then you can put some collage papers on top. So what I did was I went in, and I used um, matte medium. I cut a bunch of these tissue papers up, smushed them down, and then I painted on top of that, and then I paint, used paint pens on top of that, okay? So now, if you're like, okay, I still don't like it though, then what I recommend you do is you take a frame and you find an area that you like. And I just love these little tiny pieces. Now I may not cut this up, but what I could do is I could take my phone, so I don't have my, my phones up top, but I could take my phone, take a photo, and then I can print it out and it could become an inspiration for a bigger painting. So when you're working in your art journal or when you're just messing around, keep on, keep on, you know, just keep on trying, keep on layering, don't give up. You could like just start again, but don't give up and see what else could happen. Like what else could happen to that art page you don't like? Well, you can add more stuff or you could crop into it and then see what you get. I mean, even though this this is backwards for you guys, it's abstract. And then that's another thing too, is that sometimes when you're working on art, you can turn your piece around. Okay, you can't really flip it in real life, but you could, well, you know what I mean. You can turn it around and you could see what other awesome things are in there that maybe you didn't notice before. That's why I love working with abstract and acrylics too. It's just really, really fun. All right, so here we go. When I was not feeling great, I did work on one piece. And this piece here, zoom down was done with um, 
I really didn't, I mean, I just, you guys, I had like zero energy, like so nothing in the tank. So I worked on this probably for about a week. And I all I did was I would bring this outside and I would take my Neos and I would take some colored pencils and a paintbrush and a little thing of water. And that's really all I did. And it, there were so many times during the week where I'm like, oh, this is crap. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I really started to like it. And I was like, oh, I kind of like it. I kind of like, at first I didn't like the orange. And then I really worked on some composition stuff. There's one area here where I'm not crazy about. But what I wanted to do is take some, one of the things about this, um, one of the things about this book, Ranger Dilution Sketchbook, is it's not bright white. Oh, did I freeze you guys? Oh no. It's not bright white. It is um, like a cream color. And so anyway, I wanted to use the um, white Nova and go in. And all I would do is I would take my, you know, you could be working on watercolors and Neos and all this good stuff. And then I would just go in and I would add white to the areas. And I'm just going in right now, just doing a little um, adding. So in the sketchbook, if you feel like your whites are not white enough, just grab your white titanium and fill it in. So I'm gonna keep on working on this. I don't know why, I just something about it I think is really sweet and fun and I just really kind of enjoyed it. Um, and I liked using also another thing on here too, is I'm using a little tiny pencil so you can see some of the details, just a little tiny marks and anyway, it's really, really fun. Even though we're upside down and inside out. Okay. So one of the things too, which is going to be so weird to show you guys, because I am backwards, there's three things I want to talk to you about that were questions that came up, okay? One of them is um, your signature. One of them is um, the difference between Stabilos and Woody uh, Neos, which I'm going to show you. And another one is on selling. So when we get to the selling point, I'm going to flip us around. So um, I'm actually talking to you straight, but for now, I wanted to show you a couple things with the Neos and the Woodies. Um, so for those of you guys who are new to mixed media, fun, fun, fun. I'm going to try and find a page. I'll just blank page. Let's find, look at all this fun stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just do it right here. Okay, how did I get so backwards, you guys? All right. Pretend I'm left-handed. So Neos, Neo 2s, are my one of my favorite, my favorite art supplies. They are, you gotta get twos because then you um you have to get twos because then they will um you can use them for with watercolor and I mean water and paint. Of course I don't have water and paint with me, but the stabilos are the same. So stabilos and neos are very, very similar. The thing is the stabilos are a lot cheaper than the neos. The neos are skinnier. And I feel like I can get more out of a Neo. One of the questions was like, which one do I like better and why? And the Neo for sure I like better because I like to do little tiny details. Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry if the, if the internet, it doesn't say like I'm in and out. So I'm hoping that you guys just stick with me. If it goes in and out, I don't know why. It's so weird. It's so weird, but uh, I haven't so far lost you on my end, so I'm blabbing away. So if you guys are in and out too, hopefully the replay will be pretty decent. Uh, you can tell which colors I like because some of them are smaller than the others. But like if you wanted to use uh, the Stabilo, I mean the Stabilo Woody, it's just a thicker thing. Now, 
I haven't sharpened this and you could sharpen this and get a, a nice sharp point. The main difference really to me is the thickness. I think the quality is very, you know, they're very close. I would say maybe the Neos are a better quality and you can obviously get a lot better um, color selection. I think there's like one kit where you can get maybe 48, maybe even more different colors. I also have been finding the Neos in art stores as singles. That's been huge. I don't believe the Stabilos come in a big variety. These are really marketed for kids. And so anyway, I just wanted to show you that. You can use both with water and um, they're both great. So I would just like experiment for sure on a lot of these pieces. I use both at the same time. Um, let see if I can find one. Like all of this is like Woody's and Neo's. You know, you just take some a brush with water and, and go to town. The thing is too, uh, you can do both of these also on canvas. Don't feel like the Neos and the wax crayons are only for paper. You should experiment with them on your canvas too. They're a completely different feel. They're gonna feel different and they're going to look different, um, but you could definitely try them on your canvas, okay? All right, now here's the thing that's gonna be so weird is how to sign your art. This is so weird because we're gonna be completely backwards. But I think it's important. I wanted to show you a few things. Um, this is an old painting. And the reason I'm showing you this one is because, I mean, I know you guys go with me on this one, that uh, we're backwards, but I wanted to show you, where am I? <laughs> okay. So when I started selling art and when I was thinking about signing work, I did my whole name, Andrea Garvey. I did it with, uh, this I think I did with, um, no, this is probably a paint pen, but before I did these ones, I would do, you know, with a small paintbrush. I would do it with a paintbrush and I would just write my name. I always hated it and it would shake and whatever. And so then what I started doing as I created more art and I sold more, I actually worked on my signature. I know it's so weird, but I actually worked on doing my signature. And so <laughs> then it became um, a Garvey. And where am I? Right down here. So this became a Garvey and I practiced with a paint pen and I just kind of messed around with that. And then when I do some smaller works, I just do a little AG in the corner. And so what I do is on my watercolors, I usually do pencil um, or a colored pencil, which is like this right here. And I like them to be subtle. I don't want my name to be like really big. I'm always self-conscious about my name, it's so weird. but. Um, I use a paint pen and you can do, pretend this is the front of a piece of art. What I do is I just grab my paint pen and again, we're gonna be backwards, but you guys get the hang of it. I hold my hand on my canvas and I use my other, I use it to like hold my, my hand, but I use it to steady myself, okay? If I didn't like my signature, I could go in right away and rub it out, or I could paint over it. I have painted over my signature a bazillion times. Now, um, you're obviously, the color choice of what you wanna use to make your signature, most of the time I'll use white. So you could wipe it off and then get a baby wipe and then wipe that off so that you start again fresh. You do for sure want to make sure your canvas is dry when you're doing the paint pens. When you sign your work, you want to make sure it is dry. So use your hand. Now I'm making the signature bigger than I normally would, but you want to use your other hand to hold on. I love 
pink pens, okay? And um, they work great for me, and you can get them Sharpies, or you can get them in um, lots of different brands. So uh, Lisa had a question on, are the Neos and Stabilos permanent? They are not permanent, but if you work with Neo colors or Stabilos, and you want them to be permanent, then you could do a fixative spray over them before you keep layering. I know that when I work with my Neos, there's a big chance I'm gonna end up painting over it or painting around it, and some of it might bleed. And that's just, you know, I just don't really care, I guess. So I uh, just wanted to get back to you on that. So that's how I do my signature. I'm gonna flip this around and chat a little bit more about that too. So hold on one second. Get to see a beautiful sunny day. For those who have not seen my studio, you guys look at that plant. This one, it's a fiddle, fig. Look how big it is. I'm not too sure. <laughs> too sure what to do at the very top right over here is a piece of fishing wire holding up that branch is that hysterical anyway all right i'm gonna flip this around flip what figurative what what figurative <laughs> what figurative <laughs> then the other thing is i got these new glasses and they change they they turn to sunglasses and it's so bright today <laughs> i must look like the biggest door <laughs> Anyway, all right, hopefully I'm not too dorky. Not too dorky. Okay, um, Becky, the fixatives that I use are, there's so many of them. Um, there's Krylon, there's Winsor Newton. I, would, I don't think you need to spend a lot of money on fixatives at all. I think you can just go on to Amazon or go into your art store. I do recommend matte um, as a fixative. And then I let it dry. And then I will go back into layers. The thing is, like with fixatives and working with things that are not permanent, you do have to just be careful. You can't be like rubbing it because it, you know, the fixative is going to help. It's not going to be like a complete sealer. I know a few people that do seal their art. Uh, Betty Krause is one of my friends, and she has a sort of a liquid she brushes on when she's done, and then I spray mine with a sealer. Um, so there's different sealers and so I know that there are so many artists out there that do all different types of ways that they do it. I'm probably the one artist who does not do a very good job of sealing <laughs> or fixatives. I guess I don't care that much unless I was selling my art. If I'm selling my art, I definitely want to spray it and seal it so that it is good to go um, and that I don't have to worry about it fading. But I do want to say something about that. There's a difference between fixative and, and, and not spraying. So, so fixative is, is if you're working in layers, especially if you're working with pastels and things like Neos, um, the sealer, when you're finished with your art and you wanna do a, um, you know, a, um, an acrylic, I might lose, I'm a little, 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 I can't remember what the word I'm trying to say is. <laughs> if you wanna seal it and get it set, uh, I'll go find a can. Um, a, a, they so back in the day, it was really for oils, and it was for when it was too sunny and it would fade and stuff like that. There's a lot of conversation about that acrylics are not really going to fade. So watercolors, yes, they will fade. I've had my watercolors fade on me a lot. Um, so let's see what I have over here as a little. Let me show you what I use. Um, whoops. <laughs> whoopsie! Okay, I got these two things here. All right, so one's a fixative. I don't have a fixative on me, but these are um, just brands of different matte varnish. This is the matte varnish Windsor Newton, and this is what I would spray. There's clear coat for sure. There's Krylon. There's so many out there. They're all fine. You don't have to get anything fancy just know that gloss is going to be shiny matte is going to be matte and um kathy yes has the fixative for pastel so you know the thing is you just have to experiment um my friend renee she does pastels all the time and she's my fixative question go-to girl so anyway all right moving on on the signature back to the signature <clears throat> here's a tip from my mom <laughs> here's a nanny tip okay 
my god look at my hair it's just a little bit <laughs> I'm a little bit wonky um nanny really believes that um when you're done with your art assign it and then you're done like if you're kind of thinking about your art and you don't know if you're finished go ahead and sign it and be finished you can always go back and work on it but she's all like just sign it and be done with it but one of the questions was do you sign like all your journal pages what do you sign what do you not sign i um started only signing my art when i became a professional artist i don't really sign my journal pages i um wish I would have signed more of my art that I did a long time ago. I would just get into a habit, like find your signature, practice on in your journal page, practice what you like to do, use pencil on watercolors, use a paint pen on your acrylics, and then just come up with a, like a really fun scribble and be, you know, done. If you ever sell your art, you definitely want to sign it. Okay. So, and you can also sign the back. You don't have to put it on the front. You can also turn it around and put it on the back. Couple little tips on the signing. Um, candy, the sealer. I'm gonna. There are a lot of questions on this. The sealer. I'm gonna ask Betty what she uses. She uses a Liquitex. I know that. I've seen her like brush it on. I think um, Amanda Evanston. She also brushes on a sealer. So there's lots of different options out there. Okay. Um, all right. So another question was something I want to talk about is. How to get started selling your art? It was such a good question. And uh, I just want to just talk about that for a few minutes. So there's a lot of people in this group who are creative and they love making art. And wouldn't it be awesome to sell some of it and get some money and buy more art supplies? So there's all different kinds of levels where we are. We're either professional and you make your money selling art that's what you do that's your job you are a artist you're a professional artist and you're gonna sell then there are people who um, are just starting out and they're thinking about selling their art um, and they want to keep it and or they want to give it away so there's so much of us right we're all in this sort of line of different things and I have been there. I've been there from the beginning all the way to where I am now. And so I was really thinking about this the other night and I wrote down some stuff. I don't want to forget my, my handy notes. I wrote some notes here. Um, one thing I want to say is when you're starting out and you want to sell a couple things, it's really hard to let go. It's really hard to let go. It's also really hard to figure out your price. <laughs> so those are really hard things to do. I, all I have to say on that letting go is it's a lot easier the more you do. And I think, I, I, I feel like I don't wanna bore you with all my stories, but uh, you guys might remember my pink elephant story. And it was the first painting I sold as a, when I decided I wanted to try selling art as a part-time gig, I sold this painting and my girlfriend came over the night before I went to this art festival and she said, that is way too cheap. You need to mark your prices up. So I did. And this guy came into my art booth and he wanted to buy this painting. It was my favorite painting. So I had a two prong thing. Okay. This is a two prong story. I had a painting I loved. It was my, I like love, love, loved. And I also didn't know how to price it. Okay. So painting I loved. Pricing, ugh, not too sure, but my girlfriend said, jack it up, so I did. So he comes in, and he comes into my booth, and he really wants to buy this painting, and he asked if I would, like, move my price. <laughs> I'm so sad that I was going to maybe sell the painting. All I said was, I, I would only go up. I would not go down on my price because I loved this painting so much. So this is how like new I was, unprofessional. You know, I just spoke from my heart. I didn't even want to really sell the painting. So anyway, he came back the next day and he walks into the booth. First guy, must have slept on it. He walked into the booth and he looked at me and he goes, I have to have that painting. And so I was like, oh, and I started bawling my eyes out. Okay, so here's what the most important part of the story is. One of the biggest lessons for me to move forward in my art career was letting go, 
was just completely letting go of the fact that I'm in love with my painting and I somebody else wants it. That was huge, you guys. He was crying and I was crying and it was like really intense and I, I think I have a couple of blog posts on it. I just will never forget it, ever, ever, ever. And he paid my full price. So um, that was my Pink Ellie. It's a it's a painting I have I have made way more money than the original. Even though I sold the original for quite a lot, I think it was like I want to say maybe it was like eighteen hundred or something. I mean, it wasn't cheap. It was expensive, but I really wanted. I was not going to budge, and. I have sold so much on this painting in prints and canvas wraps. It's so, not to digress so much because I'm coming back to the question, which is how to get started in selling, is that if you love your art and you're really thinking about selling your art, get a high res scan, get a high res scan. Because if somebody wants to buy your art and says to you, I don't want you to sell these prints. I mean, you're not doing a commercial license. You're selling it to somebody. You don't have to sell them that agreement. If that person wants to buy your art and doesn't want you to sell it to anybody else as a print, then they need to pay more money for it. And that's a whole nother conversation, okay? So uh, two part on that one is there's a lesson in letting go. And that's a lesson that if you really want to get into selling some art, even if it's part time, that's a that's a lesson. Once you start doing them, you'll realize letting go is actually letting more in. Letting go of your art will allow you to have space and bring more back to you. Okay, so it's a really important lesson. It's really a lesson for everything we do, right? In life, I mean, all of the stuff. The other is um, how how do I start getting my art out there and, and selling it. So I've got a couple answers. I can't remember the, the, the lady, the, our friend who asked, I'm sorry, but, um, okay. One is if you're local, then I suggest you try to sell your art locally first. And that could be whether you have like a little artisan gallery in your town or if it's a, um, a art gallery, you want to go in and ask if they would, you know, like, like to have a lot of local artists. There's a lot of local artists who, um, there's a lot of local small galleries who love to sell local artist work. The thing you have to be careful about is they're going to take a commission. So that's something when you're working with the pricing, you need to know that if you want to sell it in a shop or you want to sell it in a gallery, they're going to take a little cut, okay? But that's something that you, we can talk about later, but that's something that you need to think about. But if you start local, then you don't have to worry about shipping. And that's a whole other thing to get into. Um, another way to sell local is through Facebook Marketplace. Now, Facebook Marketplace is most everybody has it. I think it's in, even international. And that's when you want to, it's like a Craigslist um, eBay for local. And then you could take a photo of your art. You could put a little description. You could put a price. What I recommend you do is you actually put your price out there. I took a class from Jean Oliver and her opinion on this is that if you just say, hey, look at me, I've got, I'm selling, I'm selling my art, and you don't tell anybody what the price is or the dimensions, then they have to do the legwork to try and find you and ask you the question. So put it out there and then see what happens. And maybe no one will buy it from Marketplace, but you're at least getting your steps of getting that done. The other thing that you could do is you could open an Etsy store. And I have an Etsy store and... Um, it's so easy to do, you guys. It's so simple, simple, easy to do. But it is a place where you could link somebody if they wanted to buy your art. You could, instead of oh, uh, putting your own online website together, say somebody's like, hey, I really am interested in your art, then you could give them the link to your Etsy shop. And Etsy just takes a little percentage of your sales, but it, and it's really easy to do. The thing about Etsy is that it's so big now, people can't really find you organically. They would have to like know, hey, like Wendy's on here, and maybe you, would, Wendy would say, here's my link to my shop, and they would be there. 
Um, and then something that's super important is don't undervalue your art. If you're interested in selling, don't give it away and don't undervalue your art. Okay. It's really pricing is a really hard thing to do. Um, and for anybody who's in on here and interested, I'm so excited because but I am creating a whole line of classes all on business strategies for people who want to do their art as a side hustle. It's really not for big professionals. It's really for people like us who are like, hey, I want to sell some stuff. I work really hard. I'm making these beautiful things. I'm going to sell them and make some money and who knows where that will lead. Um, and I, I just want to encourage and teach people the exact same way I learned. And so for five years, I did a side business while I worked full time. So anyway, all that blah, 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 blah. And um, if you guys have any questions, for sure, let me know in the comments before next our next live because I can always answer. I'm just trying to think um, best way to get, oh, I wrote myself this other note. Um, no matter how or what direction you want to sell in, whether it's an, an art gallery, whether it's Facebook Marketplace, whether it's Etsy, nothing is a waste of time. And everything you do to put yourself out there and your art out there is only going to help you in another way down the road. Nothing is, if nobody buys it, nothing is a waste of time because it could be just your right customer hasn't been there okay so they're not ready yet but they will be there and I encourage you guys all to do that and to get your art out there okay oh I wanted to show you the um vision board because they were backwards okay and I got them so hold on so vision board I love 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 I've got my vision board here um oh I might even be still backwards you guys that would stink let's see oh no I'm not good. um okay when will this class be up and running? Oh, Kim, I am hoping my classes are gonna be up and running soon. Um, I have one more small art class I'm working on that I hope to talk to you guys about in a couple weeks. And then I'm going to be doing a whole line of the Creative Side Hustle classes. And they'll be small, they'll be each one for a different kind of uh, area. Like one's gonna be on selling and online shops and another will be on how to reproduce your art and get it on things like I sell like tea towels and scarves and prints and all that good stuff so stay tuned I will always be um, chatting about it and you can um, hop onto my newsletter too for any info okay uh, this year I was so excited I decided I wanted to do my it's a little bit shiny because it's in glass I decided I wanted to do my vision board in a frame and hang it because the thing about um, vision boards is you really have to have it in your face and you want to sort of have your board close by whether you have it in your room and you wake up and you see it or whether you have it in your art area or whether you have it in your dining room table like I had mine forever and ever um, you sort of want to have it where you can see it so I thought I found this um, can I found this frame on Amazon it was 20 by 20 inch I thought it'd be a perfect size and um, these ones are older ones but I wanted to show you when you do your board you can do it on just a canvas panel and I encourage you to write your ideas these were like 2014 I wanted more time I wanted a clean house that is hysterical I wanted more money I wanted to not work at my full-time job which was at Orion telescopes at the time I wanted to have my art studio built and my goals were <laughs> oh my god these are so funny my goals were so my original store and my original art name was called Eight Annas, and it was a nod to my mother-in-law who passed away, which is a whole other story, but it got me going in this art crazy world I'm in. So it was called Eight Annas, and I wrote Eight Annas to be successful. I wanted to be in the PPP parenting. This so 2014, my kids were eight and seven. <laughs> They're probably making me crazy. So I wanted to be a better parent. 
I wanted to read more, go on vacation with just Mark and go to Hawaii by 50. Those were like my goals, okay? And um, my big outlandish goals I wrote on here is Eight Honest to be as big as Papaya, which is an amazing company, spend a summer in Europe, wouldn't that be fun? Retire early. Okay, so just so you know, when you're working on your boards, you know, think um, of dreaming big. And like somebody just said the other day, I was watching, listening to this podcast, dream the lid off. How fun is that? Just dream, dream, dream. So this is an older one. And I love creating on things that are hard and stiff. So that way you can put them up. You can put it on a shelf you know, do things like that. So anyway, I just uh, love doing them. And all you need is, you know, an open mind. You need to look at it all the time. And um, there's a whole class, it's not that long, on my site for free. You could take that, sit down with your girlfriends and do it. Uh, just grab some magazines. One thing that's kind of newer than it was back in 2014 too, is like if you are dreaming of something really big, and you don't have it in a magazine or you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you go into Pinterest or you go into Google, you find the image that you want, and then you just get a printout of that. You just wanna make sure you're on laser printer and not jet ink, because then when you put your matte medium or your Mod Podge, you don't want it to smear. So that's something I did for this one, is I really wanted certain things to pop out and I couldn't find it in a magazine. So I just went ahead and Googled it and found my images on my own. And then another really cool thing is once you're done with your vision board, you could take a photo with your phone of your board and use that for your wallpaper. I love doing that. So I put that on my um, phone and I also have it on my desktop. <laughs> So whenever my kids like go up to my desktop, they're like, oh my God, <laughs> what is this crazy thing? It's my vision board. So, um, okay, that is it. And we are at an hour. I knew we would probably go an hour today because I have so much that I wanted to share with you. I promise to be better about making sure the camera angle is the right direction next week when we do some demos. Just send me any questions for next week. I'm live every Saturday, unless for some reason I can't be. And um, I love you guys, and I really appreciate all of the encouragement and support when I wasn't feeling good. I got my mojo back, okay? And I will see you guys, and the replay will be up. <laughs> and hopefully no issues on our internet. <laughs> okay, have a wonderful weekend. Go Bills to all my football fans out there. And of course, the 49ers because that's my boys team. All right. See ya.